Alrighty, folks, it is time for the finale of RD Racing's Extreme Dirt League here in the 410 Sprints, the 10th and final round. And we are in Knoxville, the home of sprint car racing. And first up, of course, is qualifying. It's a pretty simple track to drive overall. Um, it's all about finding the setup. It's really all in the setup. You want to run the bottom of the track, but the bottom part that is still banked. And yeah, that's basically it. It kind of works as one of those super speedway tracks in this game, kind of like an Eldora. Not too much going on to talk about, about how to drive. You can kind of see what I'm doing here, basically. And I'm in a very stacked group. Now you'll see the rundown when I cross the line. So... Hopefully I can do what I did at Kokomo, and that is get pole position in a stacked group. Uh, also, a last minute change to the rules, which if you've seen my other league racing series, like in F1, you know about how I love uh, mid-season rule changes. Obvious sarcasm for those that haven't seen those. And they decided last minute that this is going to be a 200% race. While I don't particularly disagree with the 200% race idea, I just disagree with one, just one race being different than all the rest, and two, making this, the decision last second. It would be another thing if it was decided at the beginning of the season it's 200%, but to make it 200% last second, it's, you know, it's whatever. It just messes with the continuity and consistency of the league. But yeah, you can see the group I was in absolutely stacked. Top two in points. Everyone in the top ten points that is in this group. And I qualified dead last in this group, with the difference only being... 0.13 13 hundredths separate the entire field in this group unbelievable scenes here everyone's extremely talented and trying to get a decent start here hogging the inside line we're going to be able to make two overtakes in the first lap and put ourselves up into p3 on the very first lap of our heat race and that was massive for us to be able to get ourselves into the A main to get those positions. Now I really need them to fight super hard behind us so we can hold on to this position. Because like I said, 1300 separating the entire field in qualifying. So you know everyone's got good consistency <clears throat> and you know everyone's got great pace. It really is just... A, a group that's just absolutely going to throw you through the ringer. Yeah, it makes it really brutal, too, because you got to think, of all those names I just listed, which are names that have been frontrunners this whole season, you know, most of us are going down to the B main. Or two of us are going down to B main. One guy behind us, I believe that was Oceanic, just got absolutely sent into the wall by, I believe, Rockstar. And he's going to pull a fly job on us, but we're going to get the cross under on him. Or cross, yeah, I guess cross under. M mix up the name of my moves there. <laughs> and you can just hear him laughing in the chat when he got absolutely beamed into the wall. And you can't blame him, honestly. I mean, I would feel the exact same way. I probably wouldn't be laughing, though. I would probably be uh, giving someone some choice words. <laughs> but going into the last lap of the group, of the group race, or heat, whatever you want to call it, we are holding on to P3, which is exactly, I believe, the position we needed to be able to advance into the A main. We won't be able to go into the dash, but we will be able to make the A main with this position. Harold goes in fourth after sending Oceanic Courage into the wall. It is what it is. Harold has already been claimed champion going into the final round. And we get third out of fifth in our group. Overall, not that terrible of a result. Considering the group that we are in, you know, very talented group, everyone in the top 10 in points. Didn't get the good luck like I did two rounds ago where I got a fairly easy group. Now, it is time for the 200% distance A main. Like I said, we made the A main from getting third in the group, but we did not make the dash, so we're going to start in ninth. We get an absolutely baller start with our grip. And we immediately go up into six on the first lap, gaining three positions on lap one. And we dove to the inside, too, which helped us avoid one of the Australian drivers who, surprise, surprised, 
caused a massive crash. <clears throat> I know you guys are thinking right now, wow, I can't believe one of the Australian drivers caused a massive crash that are causing people to be irritated in the chat. But, obvious sarcasm, they always do that. And we find ourselves in P6 early on, and this 60 lap race, tons of racing to go, and this one, I got Harold right up my taint this year's, well this season, I shouldn't say this year's, the season isn't here, but this season's champion, Harold, right up my ass, and it's encouraging to see, you know, that I have what it takes to at least run with these guys, you know, it gives me <coughs> a good sense of confidence moving forward into next season. Especially if we can change to get, chain together some good results at the end of this season. A little bit of rubbing on the back stretch, but no harm, no foul. I'm going to try to get the cross under on him on the exit of the corner. But we don't have enough grip to hold the inside. He's going to try to run the outside, which I think was actually a bad idea. We almost get you dived up to so close between all of us for contact there. But no one touches anyone. Just very high level of racing there you can see ahead the OU2 another Australian car causes a big accident gets in our way as well but luckily doesn't slow us down too much I'm side by side with Harold I scrape the wall a little bit but doesn't scrub off too much speed and I'm really hoping that Harold can just continue to push forward in this race the 39 though is gonna absolutely get up into me I'm gonna see him try the slide on Harold and get back underneath him and hopefully just f follow Harold up through the field, or at least follow him away from the cars behind, because that is where all the chaos is happening, and I just want to be away from the chaos. Looks like I just don't have quite the pace on this track compared to the rest of the field. That I did in Kokomo, but still got plenty of pace to be able to get a nice solid finish here, and I just want to secure these solid points. And going into this final race, I was pretty much guaranteed 7th uh, Yammy Man who is in the back because he's one of the Australians, well the one that caused the massive wreck right at the beginning, uh, he would have to pretty much, I think he had to get like second with me getting 15th to be able to take the position on me in the points, and I didn't have an opportunity to go up to six in the points. So we're basically all but locked in the six at this point. Like I said, so I want to get the best finish possible here, and with still 47 laps of racing to go. A lot of racing to go. We've got this 39 car pretty close behind me so hopefully I can hold on to this position and bring home some nice solid points at the end of this season he's gonna try to slide up underneath us there doesn't quite get enough distance on his slide job to get up in front of us but now I can see that that's definitely the move he's gonna make so I'm gonna make sure I keep my momentum up on the outside so even if he does get up underneath us like that we have all the momentum to stay ahead of him on the long straightaway that follows. Still 44 laps of racing to go in this one. He's going to get up under us. He's going to be able to get alongside us, which is going to allow him to slide up underneath again. And this is just another example of I just feel like I there's just still something with the setup. I'm not figuring out that these guys can just throw it in like that and not lose the speed and still be quicker than me even though I'm running a pretty tight consistent line you know just just something with the setup I'm still missing out on ACGI flex getting up underneath me now he's gonna get up into me causes my car to drift a little bit to the left and now here comes one of the Australian drivers up behind us very worried about the existence of him <laughs> so yeah really hoping that he doesn't start causing issues with me and hopefully we are just going to be able to settle into this race and get a gap to the cars behind. And I just don't want to even be put in a position where I can get taken out because, let me tell you, I had a fuck enough of that happen in this season. And as you can see, we fast forward all the way now to lap 50. A lot of nothing happened there for a good while. ACGI Flex pulled away from us. But the 38s caught this pink car and we have caught back up to them while they battled. So we will cut back into the race here with about 10 to go with this battle hopefully something happens where I can get a good run he touches the wall there but still is able to keep his momentum up mistake by the pink car though he goes up up into the wall I didn't see what the number of his car was I forget what it is gets up into the wall that's gonna really mess up his line and give us P7 now and as we fast forward with just one lap to go we still remained on the lead lap for the entirety of this race 
you can hear in the chat they're giving shit to the Australian drivers because they just caught. I'll be honest, like, I hate to talk shit like I have, but they caused issues all year. We come home in P7, a nice solid run for us, didn't have the pace, but we had a good consistent run, good clean racing with a lot of drivers, and I feel like this gives us a lot of momentum going forward into next season. So thank you guys for tuning into this season. The next season will be coming out sooner rather than later, and I can't wait for the start of that one.